Okay guys, let's see how we can simplify our coding by using automation such as ESLint. It's a linter integration inside of Visual Studio Code in order to automatically check for certain errors of our code. So you can go to extensions and then install this ESLint extension. Afterwards from terminal you need to use npm to install minus global ESLint just to type this. And when you are ready, you need to run ESLint in it in order to initialize the linter. So if we type ESLint minus minus in it, we'll see some questions. We would like to check the syntax and find problems. Then we'll use JavaScript modules and we'll not use a framework. We'll not use TypeScript and we'll be running your code on browser. Then we'll be using uh, JavaScript format for our config file. And that's it. This creates ESLint RC file, which is inside of our directory with the following information. The next thing we would like to do is to install HTML ESLint. So we go to its page and run the following command again, npm install HTML ESLint parser and then the ESLint plugin. When we are ready, we need to configure VS Code by providing some overrides inside of the already created ESLint RC JavaScript file, as well as inside of the VS Code settings JSON file. Let's see those files. Here we see the overrides. I'll just paste the overrides and the plugins. So this will activate the plugin. And for the VS Code settings JSON, we need to provide the following information, again taken uh, from the ESLint HTML extension website. Once we are ready, we can uh, check HTML files. All right, so here we have one example HTML file. If we click on the output here, we will be able to see that ESLint server library is loaded up and working correctly. Here on the problems, we should be able to see if we have certain problems or directly here inside of the code. So let's restart Visual Studio Code now. Okay, and if we try to make certain mistakes, let's delete certain lines. We see that the extension kicks in and starts recommending us that we have some missing uh, doc types, etc., etc. One more thing, uh, let's enable also in the beginning of our script, which is inlined, so it's not in a separate file. That's why we were doing those changes inside of the settings JSON and uh, inside of the ESLint RC.js. Let's enable the TypeScript uh, check. And the moment we are enabling this, we see that uh, certain things in the side of our code are highlighted. Uh, here, if we go on top of the problem, we'll be able to see that, for example, we are trying to assign an array of strings to a string. So we are expecting a string here inside of the inner HTML, but we are looping over those uh, objects and uh, for each of them, we are trying to push them inside of the HTML. We are creating here an array of strings. We would like to convert it to a single string in order to be accepted by the inner HTML. So we can type a dot join and uh, here we'll be joining all the items inside of a string. As you can see, the error disappeared. We here also we can see the other error that we have. And when you click on it, we see the following uh, we have first one a variable, which is a pure number, and then we have a b constant, which is actually a string. Since uh, we have this uh, type checking here enabled, uh, it complains and it say that uh, type number and string cannot be compared. So the easier one is just to be unifying the types or we can use type casting here. But this is an illustration for you to see that such errors can be handled by the type check that we are running. Uh, still, errors might happen. For example, if I change uh, here and by mistake type something, we see that we are not being warned. This is also the case for the attributes. Although we can go to the uh, box, click on the dot, and we see that we have allowed ID name and uh, this is one way to prevent for entering uh, erroneous code but as you can see we are not warned for this in order to check uh, 
for such errors, actually, we can use um, type uh, definitions such as this one here. So if I uncomment it, we'll see that both of the errors are being highlighted and uh, we need to fix them. Now everything runs correctly. What is doing this is that we are defining that inside of our boxes, so putting this type definition on top of the boxes, that we will be having an object with ID and name and it will not be a single object, but it will be an array of objects with those empty uh, brackets here. So we are having an array of objects and those are the types that we contain inside the number and the string. Of course, this might uh, appear a little bit difficult uh, in the beginning and uh, you need to choose uh, for yourself the comfort level of uh, type checking that you would like to achieve in your projects. Probably the next step will be after mastering JavaScript to switch to TypeScript where you'll be enforced uh, to use those types when writing your code. So I hope uh, those uh, tips will help you to quickly spot potential bugs and mistakes in order uh, to have a smoother experience while using JavaScript. Thank you.